Hello, I'm sitting on the floor again because my stomach actually really hurts, but uh, that's not important. You saw the title of this video. This is about dystopias. Now, these have obviously been around for a really long time, but nowadays most people tend to associate them, or at least most people in the circles I run in, tend to associate them with the terrible young adult dystopia boom that we saw like 10 or 12 years ago when the Hunger Games got big. And because of that, many people were kind of soured on the concept of dystopias, and so I just don't see them as often nowadays, which is kind of a shame. And I think part of the reason for that was that so many of those terrible young adult ones were just authoritarianism is bad, which, I mean, you're not wrong, but you're not, it's too vague and you're not really saying anything. You know, dystopias are about uh, the fears and anxieties of the author slash the audience slash society at the time that they were writing, you know? It takes specific things and then blows them up into much bigger deals and says like, hey, this is a problem, and it's just trying to get more people to uh, agree with that. Like, in The Hunger Games, for instance, since that's a very well-known one, that was talking about, like, class divisions and how reality TV is kind of fucked up and how propaganda works, and it's just specifically bringing up problems with American society, or at least problems as the author saw them. And I don't know, I was just thinking about that a while ago, and also because of some stuff, my schedule for putting these videos out has been moved around, so I figured, you know what, let's just put out a short one on, like, ideas for dystopian settings that people can use, and obviously feel free to use all these, and just comment down below what you think about some of these and how you would change it, maybe, or other ideas for settings that you have. So the first problem that I thought of that we could do something with was uh, environmental degradation, and the first setting would be one where it's decades or centuries in the future where climate change has just completely fucked the planet and like obviously human civilization is still around but there's large swaths of the planet which is just uninhabitable to us and the land isn't air arable and there's not many animals or plants there anymore and just so everything went into the toilet and so governments had to crack down and now poor people are extremely restricted in what sort of technologies they can use and how much they can pollute because they have to try and get this under control, but then rich people are still doing whatever the hell they want. You know, it's kind of like in the real world how no matter how much we try and change things, there's still people running around in private jets all the time, which pollutes a way, way more than your average person is going to over their lifetime. Another one would be that the chemicals being put into the environment, you know, like uh, microplastics and other stuff like that, uh, are building up in human bodies so much that most of us don't live past the age of 30. And these things are pretty much unavoidable, especially microplastics, so it, it's really bad. And in order to continue civilization and continue the human race, people are just forced to breed. You know, like, before, uh, by the time you're, like, in your teens or early 20s, they're gonna start going over to you like, hey, make children right now. And obviously that would be terrible, for a variety of reasons. Another problem that we can play around with that I haven't seen many people do, to be honest, is uh, propaganda and the way that works. Like, one simple uh, setting, or maybe not even a setting, but just like a thing you can show, would be like people denying something literally while they're doing it. Like it could be the president or some other politician uh, denying that he stole money and use it to buy a giant ass mansion and he could be filming himself literally in front of his giant ass mansion while he's doing it and some people would defend him on that for whatever reason and that just that'd be kind of neat because we are seeing stuff like that nowadays another one would be that there is so much propaganda being pumped out at all times of all types from all different directions that even the people making it no longer remember what reality is like, because keep in mind that while, yes, governments like the American government and the Russian government gets brought up a lot in this discussion because they're one of the most prominent ones doing it, but they're not the only ones. Uh, and other governments and other organizations do it. But anyways, uh, they <laughs> will bring up propaganda, but they don't just support one side with it usually. Uh, their idea is to sow division among their enemies, basically. So they will sometimes support, like, right-wing things and left-wing things and just use that to stir the pot and make people angry. And if you do that enough, maybe even the people making it would just forget what's real anymore. And because of this, uh, because propaganda also escalates more and more and more, 
there could just be constant violence between people because, well, quite frankly, uh, propaganda tends to escalate more and more and more, and that's why we're getting to the point where, like, in the United States, we have people just openly calling for the end of democracy because it won't get them what they want. So, shit like that could get uh, worse and worse as time goes on if it gets more out of control. A world where people have just rejected all medicine altogether. Like, this could start with vaccines and they just outright make them illegal. It, it's not even like, I don't want them, don't give it to me. It would just become, hey, make it illegal, because that's... The direction we're starting to see with some people, uh, I, I really, you know, anti-vaxxers used to just be dipshits. You know, it wasn't something that you could apply to any particular political group. You know, it wasn't like a left-wing thing or a right-wing thing. It was just dipshits from all over the place, and most of us agreed they were stupid. But now it's almost exclusively a right-wing thing, so I, I don't know. Make of that what you will. But, you know, they're all dipshits, and if you're an anti-vaxxer, uh, hi, you're fucking stupid. But from that point, like, if you're dumb enough to think that this thing will harm you, even though everyone gets it and it doesn't harm them in any way, uh, or if you're even stupider and you genuinely think that it's, like, a plot to track you or control your brain or something, then it would be easy to apply that logic to other stuff as well, like antibiotics and other types of medication, and so that could easily become illegal too. And you'd have people that were trying to tell them, hey, this is good, but they just wouldn't be able to, to convince them and it would be it would just be awful to live in this uh, society because we all live in a society. And this would also could overlap or be a metaphor for things like abortion and hormone replacement therapy, which a lot of people are trying to restrict access to more and more and more, even though they are often medically necessary procedures. The justice system, you know, imagine a justice system where every crime, no matter how horrible it is, is punished with a fine, you know? Because the, the worse the crime would be, obviously you'd have to pay more, but if you have enough money, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Like, you could murder three people, and if you had enough money for the fine, you'd get away with it with no punishment. But at the same time, if you couldn't afford the fine, you would just be executed on the spot. So the justice system would uh, be a lot smaller, I guess, than it is now, because it wouldn't have prisons or anything, and I imagine trials would be a bit speedier, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And just, yeah, like, you could do some interesting stuff with that. A world of underpopulation. You know, people used to bring up overpopulation as a problem a lot, but nowadays I'm seeing more and more concern, uh, from certain groups of people at least, about underpopulation, because there's a lot of countries, like in East Asia, in Japan, South Korea, Singapore, and especially in Europe as well, uh, birth rates are falling, and people are, specifically high up people in government and business, are realizing, hey, if our population crashes, we're going to have a smaller tax base, we're not going to have as many wage slaves to work for us, we need to find a way to get people making kids, and a lot of things they're doing don't seem to be working, like they're trying to offer child tax credits and stuff, and it's just not doing anything because at the end of the day, in modern society, people realize that having kids is a lot of work for basically zero reward. And so a lot of people are not having kids at all, and other people are just having one or two when they used to have 12. And obviously this has to do with, like, housing shortages and low wages for jobs and stuff like that. But anyways, whatever the reasons behind it, eventually this problem gets so bad and that the people in charge just get desperate and they're like, you know what, we're forcing everybody to, to make babies in order to make society go along. So like every year they just hold a lottery and the people who win, or win, uh, are just forced to have a kid that year. Or, you know, something along those lines. That, that would be really, really interesting to me at least. I'd be interested in seeing what other people could do with that. Or on the flip side, you could have it so that the population just crashed so much that civilization eventually collapsed and now just like the economy is failing, roads and houses and factories and everything are either laying abandoned or just falling into disrepair because there's not enough people there to, you know, maintain it all. So that could be kind of interesting too. It would be like the most original post-apocalyptic setting I've ever seen. Religious extremism. This has basically always been a problem, uh, but it, it has peaks and valleys, you know, and there's obviously different religions, but 
when it comes to extremism, they're all pretty similar. But imagine a world where religious extremism got so bad that sex is just 100% outlawed. You know, like all reproduction is done artificially. That could, uh, well, that would be no fun, would it? Like, it's not just premarital sex that they're banning or like same-sex relations or anything like that. Just all together, it's, it's not allowed. That, I, I don't know, like it just seems like a logical progression of how a lot of religions treat sexual desires. At least to me, it seems that way. Uh, or another way to handle it would be like, the government as we know it is gone and all decisions are made by God. Or made by God, I think you could put in quotes, because people would just realize, okay, we need to come to a decision, let's pray. And then they think about it for a minute and just look for a sign or something like that. And whatever they interpret as the sign, that's what they're gonna do. Like. That's not far off from how uh, some people have run societies over the years. Or imagine technology. Imagine a world where uh, software and artificial intelligence just becomes so complex and so above us that no one understands it. Like, for example, think about the YouTube algorithm. Like, a lot of people complain about it all the time, but the thing is no one actually understands it at all. And the reason for that being that when the people at YouTube made it, they made bots, which were supposed to uh, maximize the amount of time people spend on YouTube. And then those bots also made bots, and those bots also made bots, and those bots also made bots, and they're the ones that are changing everything. And so that's also why they're so reluctant to change it, because they don't understand it, they don't understand how it works, and they're afraid if they change it, it might have unintended consequences. So you can imagine how, if this applied to other things, it would be a pretty big deal, and it would be uh, extremely difficult to work out the problems with it. Nationalism. Imagine if nationalism gets even worse and countries just become smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where they're like the size of a neighborhood even, and people just start identifying with that specific neighborhood and thinking, yes, we are different than the people next door, and not only that, but we're better than the people next door. And as soon as you stop fitting in in this environment because your ideals change or maybe something else, then you just either leave or you're forced out. And so people would just be constantly moving all over the place to the point where they don't even really remember where they started or how they got here. And people would define themselves no longer what they, by what they are, but what they're not. Or imagine clout chasing. Like, clout chasing is already a disease all over the internet, but imagine there's a future where jobs are just so scarce that the only real careers that a lot of people have uh, available to them would be like being famous on the internet or something. And so in order to get that fame, in order to like leave their crappy life that they're stuck in, they're just constantly doing stupid shit to try and get attention and to try and get people to notice them, which this is basically all of TikTok now that I'm thinking about it, but eh. I'm sure many of you are already thinking over times where like, yeah, I remember this stupid person, that stupid person. Like, just imagine if that was everybody all the time and they're all constantly trying to one-up one another. That would be fucking horrible. And finally, last on the list, uh, possibly the worst dystopia I can think of, uh, just imagine a world where France exists. Like, that, that would just, that would be terrible. It's a good thing France isn't a real place. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this far. If you have your own ideas, uh, put them down below. I want to get a discussion going. And if, it's, if you don't have any of your own ideas, then just I'm glad I entertained you for a few minutes. And if you weren't entertained, why did you watch this far? And if you weren't entertained and you didn't watch this far, then I guess I'm talking to nobody. But anyways, I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, and thank you for watching this far. If you did, you have my thanks. And if you see all these names here, those are my patrons. My $10 and up patrons are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Anselievich, Dark King, Echo, Flax, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Matthew Baudreau, Micaphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Tesla Shark, Vavixis, and Wesley. All of you are great. If you want to get your name up here, then consider becoming a patron. If you can't do that, then you could also become a YouTube channel member, or just like the video, comment, and subscribe to share it around, and uh, help me eat food this month. Uh, yeah, thanks. Goodbye.